Okay, so this is uh, the picture you've studied so far. And uh, now we will consider the next thing. So basis states. What, what's what's going to happen? We have to deal with basis states. We have electron spin. We have electron angular momentum. What is the total angular momentum? The sum of them. We will have to deal with that. So we will have to deal with addition of angular momentum in the hydrogen atom. It's awfully important. That's the key of the matter. So uh, let's see what we have. Uh, Let's look at our basis states. States. So now the spin is the most important thing. We take it very seriously. Recall that when you have angular momentum, momentum, in general, we use J and M. And those are the two quantum numbers. Uh, j squared, the angular momentum has eigenvalues, h squared, l times uh, j times j plus 1. And uh, jc over h bar has eigenvalues m. That's the notation for angular momentum. So we have the electron spin. Spin. So what is the notation? It's S, M, S. And it's always equal to 1 half, because the electron always has spin 1 half. The electron have many orbital angular momentum, 0, 1, 2, 3. But spin, it only has spin 1 half. So S is always 1 half. Ms can be plus minus one half. So that's two states. States. For orbital electron, orbital, we have L and M. Those are the names. L and M is the quantum number. So how do we define the uncoupled basis? The uncoupled basis is a set of states that enumerates the whole spectrum of the hydrogen atom using those quantum numbers to distinguish all those states. So the uncoupled basis are those states that we had there, uncoupled basis are all these states, and they're described by n, the principal quantum number, l and m. This is the orbital. And you could say, well, s and m, s. That would be a correct thing to do. But as we said, s is always 1 half. So Copying and copying again something that is always the same value and doesn't have any new information is not worth it. So people don't include the S, and we put MS. And that's electron uh, spin along the Z direction, electron SC. And it takes values plus minus one half. So this is our uncoupled basis. For any electron in that table, you need to know uniquely that electron state. You need to give me all these numbers. You have to tell me where I am horizontally. After that, where I am, where I am, I am vertically, I'm sorry, for n, where I am horizontally for l, within the l multiplet which is my value of m. And once you're done that, you should tell me up or down. So all those numbers are important. They're one to one corresponding to the basis states. But now, let's do the coupled basis. 
That's where thing gets a, begin to start interesting, to get interesting, coupled basis. So we'll consider the total angular momentum J, which is L plus S. When we add angular momentum, we basically say, you know, you have states that are representations of orbital angular momentum and spin. But I want you to express those as eigenstates of the total angular momentum. That's all adding angular momentum means. It's recognizing that we want to re-express our basis states in terms of eigenstates of the total angular momentum. That's all you're doing. So what do we do then? We have an L multiplet, let, this is, what does an L multiplet mean? That's a set of vectors, it's a vector space. And we tensor it with a spin multiplet, let, and the result is equal to the sum of J multiplets. Because your states are nothing else but tensor products of these things. Even though we never wrote it in the way of tensor product, basically the wave function has some expression having to do with L and M in here, and it has some value of the spin. So a given state has all these properties. A given state lives in the tensor product, and we want to write it as sum of J multiplets. So I will want to say a couple more things about this. When we do addition of angular momentum, what happens to the quantum numbers? That's again also a thing that sometimes is a little subtle, uh, and I want to emphasize it. So an L multiplet is described by L and M. A spin multiplet is defined by S and MS. But when you have a J multiplet, you have J and J, um, how did they call it? Um, JM, oh. I think I call it, yeah, JM. But actually, you have a little more. I claim that the states, so he, he, this is what I'm meaning by this. These states have two quantum numbers you can specify. You cannot specify any more. This is the Z component of L, and you cannot specify the X or the Y component. Here is all you can specify of these states. You certainly can specify the value of J and the value of JM, the M component, um, the Z component of J. But can you specify more? And the answer is yes, you can specify a little more. You can actually specify here, all these states in here are eigenstates of L, of S, of J, and of JM. So you add two more. This may sound a little uh, funny, but every state here had the same L eigenvalue. They were, for example, L equal three. So all the states have L equal three. All the states are eigenstates of L squared eigenstates. All the states here are L squared eigenstates. And all the states here are S squared eigenstates with the same eigenvalue. So if you multiply them and you rearrange them, because that's all this addition of angular momentum is, is just rearranging the states, you still have that all the states that are here 
have the same L squared and the same S squared. So L and S are good quantum numbers here. The things that are not good quantum numbers are M and MS are not good. Good. They're not good quantum numbers of these states. They are not eigenstates of M or MS. So this is something you've learned with addition of angular momentum. If this is a little fuzzy, it will be important that you review it and uh, make sure this becomes clear. There will be stuff in recitation about these things, and um, we'll do more with it. But now, what, are, what is the application in the hydrogen atom for this? Well, uh, our multiplets are multiplets of some value of L that are being tensored with spin one half. Spin one half. Orbital L. And when you have this, you know that the answer is L plus one half plus L minus one half. Those are the two values of J. J max and J min in this case. So in the hydrogen atom, the notation is that this is the L state with J equal one, L plus one half. This is the J value plus the L states with uh, L minus one half. So this is the capital L we were mentioning before, in this case, L of L. And our notation is evolving. This is the spectroscopic notation in which we will describe states by N, L, J. So that's the spectroscopic notation. You put the principal quantum number, the capital L, that is for L equals zero, you put an S, a P, a D, and the number, which is the value of J here. So let's look at our spectrum again. Uh, we have to do that. It's uh, an important thing. So we'll do three cases here, N equals one, N equals two, and n equals three. We have l equals zero, l equals one, l equals two, and that's s, p, and d. Okay, let's begin. This state, ground state. What is the ground state? It's l equals zero, tensor with one half for the ground state. This is just the state one half, so it will be a state with j equal one half. So it should be written as n, which is a one, the capital L, which is zero, so it's s, and the j value one half. That's the state, one s one half. Go here. Well, that's still L equals zero, so the, this product still works is two S one half, and here is three S one half. That's the name of the multiplets in the coupled basis. What do we have here? Um, we have L equals one. So with L equals one, we have one tensor one half. So we will get J equal three halves and one half. So we must have two. What is the value of L? Remember the value of L is preserved. So if this was L equals one, uh, after you do the tensor product, L is still a, quant a good quantum number. So you have 
to p three halves and two p one half. Here you would have two states, three p three halves and uh, three p one half. <laughs> Finally here, L equals two, you have two tensor one half is five halves plus three halves. So you would have three D five halves and three D three halves. Those are your states. Um, this is the notation we will use. So what is the uncoupled basis at the end of the day? The uncoupled basis is N, you still have N. What is the coupled basis now? We have the uncoupled basis being this. The coupled basis is still N, still L, we said L carries through, still S would carry through, but we don't have it there. Now I cannot put M. M is no good when I multiply, but I have J and JM. So these are your coupled basis states, coupled basis. And it's represented in this notation, the N, the little l is represented for whatever letter is here. The J is here, and well, the JM is not said, but uh, that's a multiplet. Okay, so we've rewritten the state in the couple basis because we will need those states in order to do perturbation theory. 